Oh, we're recording. Yeah. Oh, sorry. You're going to want to edit that part. No, I was going to leave in the whole conversation about your Bobby's world hair. <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> Today, we're going to engage in a spiritual discipline of mocking Scott. <laughs> Join us for this ride. So it's good to be with you for our sixth and final session on this uh, healing series. Today, we continue to focus on the movement in the spiritual life, which is the transformation from illusion to prayer. And we're going to start off by talking a little bit about something that's called contemplative prayer. It's kind of an umbrella term for a sort of way of praying that the goal is really self-emptying. It is about emptying our thoughts and our minds and getting to this kind of open place, empty space where God can fill us. Yeah, Bonnie, that's a really good summary, I think, of what contemplative prayer is and can be for us. And this week, and reading that one, I was struck by his discussion of of a book called The Way of the Pilgrim. And it's about this pilgrim who decided to embark on a journey in which he would say the Jesus prayer um, thousands of times a day. And for those of you who don't know the Jesus prayer, it's simply, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. But this particular pilgrim said it slightly different. That once again, thousands of times a day, ultimately, he would repeat to himself, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me. In the beginning, we often hear our own unruly inner noises more loudly than God's voice. This is at times very hard to tolerate, but slowly, very slowly, we discover that the silent time makes us quiet and deepens our awareness of ourselves and God. Then, very soon, we start missing these moments when we are deprived of them, and before we are fully aware of it, an inner momentum has developed that draws us more and more into silence and closer to that still point where God speaks to us. Yeah, and so uh, now one talks about uh, this Jesus prayer as uh, a simple way for us to begin a prayer life by taking up this short prayer uh, in our own lives. But that that's not the end of the prayer practice, but it's basically the beginning that... Um, because the real goal is to learn um, the prayer of our own heart, that each of us has a unique way that God has made us for prayer. Or another way to put it perhaps is that God has a unique gift of prayer for each of us. Uh, but it takes, it takes time and practice to discover it. And that by taking up the Jesus prayer, we create room in our, in, in our interior lives for that to be revealed um cuz cuz in that in the in the story of this russian peasant who takes it up he's initially filled with a, a lot of joy and great feelings at at using the jesus prayer but he ultimately learns that that is not the prayer of his heart uh, but there's e- an even fuller communion with the lord jesus christ he can experience once he that prayer helps him go within himself and meet god there One expression that uh, David used earlier was a kind of spiritual buffet. We know there are so many different ways to prayer, you know, like I'll be the first to give you six different tools for prayer. Uh, And we can become overwhelmed by not really knowing where to start or how to start a contemplative prayer practice. And so what if we were just to say, this is the starting place is the Jesus prayer Mm -hmm. for everybody. This is a starting place for everybody. It is the gate that you begin your journey on. Um, and prayer is like a pilgrimage. Uh, in our culture, we don't often take pilgrimages, we travel. And travel is a form of escape, uh, a form of entertainment. But the difference between travel and pilgrimage, there are many differences. But a pilgrimage has a kind of um, spiritual end or goal and uh, In pilgrimage, it's the people that you meet along the way, the gift of their presence, the way that God shows up for you, all of these things that you pay attention to. So uh, in this season where we can't travel (laughs) very easily uh, because of the pandemic, there may be an invitation to take a spiritual pilgrimage, to go somewhere within 
and to enjoy the gifts of the journey of prayer as we as we take it. And I yeah, think, of us. oh, sorry, David. Well, I was I was just thinking about the differences between travel and pilgrimage, and my best travel experiences, I think, are when I'm able to stay in the moment. My worst ones are when I get annoyed at interruptions or things not going according to plan. But with pilgrimage, it is in the interruptions. It is in the unexpected. It is in the things not going according to plan where the moments of grace and blessing, I think, can really occur. And that's something that we can experience despite not being able to travel on that inner pilgrimage that you were describing, Bonnie, paying attention to the bumps in the road, the interruptions, because I think it's there that God might be speaking to us. We might be hesitant to begin that pilgrimage because, um, you know, there, there's risk and uncertainty involved in that. I actually had the opportunity before coming to my current appointment where I walked the Camino de Santiago, which is an ancient Christian pilgrimage um, trail across. It starts in different places in Europe, but the bulk of it's across northern Spain. Um, and it certainly is a lot about the people you meet along the way um, from all over the world. But what hard is, is the uncertainty. At least, I mean, in today's world, you can certainly book every place you're going to stay ahead of time if you wanted to. But if we think about how most Christians have embarked on pilgrimages, they had to rely on the gifts of strangers. Uh, they had to trust that at the end of the day, they would find shelter in a bed uh, in order to gain the strength they need for, for the next day's journey. And while, uh, and so when we embark on a spiritual pilgrimage ourselves in our own homes, I think we can still sense that there's, there's some risk in that because we don't know where this journey of prayer will take us because it will certainly involve transformation. Right. And that was where now and really starts to bring up that reminder, which I found helpful that prayer is not just an individual practice, even contemplative prayers, not just an individual practice, that we, we need that community aspect to it also. The church teaches us how to pray. And two, we can rely on one another um, when we're not sure what that next step is for our own pilgrimage or we feel that we've lost our way, or we just need somebody to, uh, um, to remind us to keep moving forward uh, and that there's progress here to be made together as churches, even if we can't travel out into the world, even if we can't go out and be together in the same ways that we're used to, uh, there's still a spiritual journey we can take together through our common prayer life. Well, it's been a lot of fun. Yes, thanks, y'all. Yes, thank you. Blessings on your spiritual pilgrimage. <laughs>